Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. No, no! I have the massive volume low on the game. I always turn it down low. stressed if enemies had opportunities where they could be, you know, killed or hit and then opportunities where that closed off. Cool. Wouldn't it be interesting to kind of do um, like wave cancellation with your bullet patterns? Like, you anticipate an incoming wave and you're like, let me counter it, just like Udahata. Yeah, he does a spiral, you're like, oh yeah, I can do that too. You spin around and throw out your counter spiral, anti-spiral. Yeah. Oh no, too much anime. Gotta cut that <laughs> down right now. Uh, one idea I have was mount defensive skills uh, can be stationary. Instead of dashing and using iframes or some... Like in the combat variety it encourages people to stand still, hold their ground, right? There's there's all these things that if you have a shrub hog or an armadillo, you know, you don't dash into your retreat of shell, you just go into your retreat of shell. You stand there, right? You're not like we and even though action game wise it's fun to put movement into everything. Sometimes hunkering down is the thing to do. So this is kind of an interesting choice right here that you don't understand what these choices are uh, until until Lemon explained it to me. But like right here, I can go up to the purple zone or down to the blue. To, to successfully navigate the blue, I need um, basically a soak proof mount. <coughs> you are not it. Got bang away, there we go. Oh, so close. Oh, wow. That's bad. Shows you how reckless I am when it comes to Reckless, reckless. And then I make the little ones run away because I unlock that perk. you get your attack. I just got this in the same battle. No, that's the one skill. Good, good. No, good. Way too quick. I guess it's interesting. So, in, in an initial part of the game, if doing battle gives you more pin patches, and picking up pin patches gives you levels, and giving you levels gives you perks, and giving you perks gives you more abilities and versatility, like, that's an incentive enough to, to do battle, especially in the, when you're still learning the game. Wow. Oh, the melee can stun them cool. So this is so confusing. Uh, the, the electric shocks that come from this enemy are yellow. Good thing I'm yellow, but... So this is one of the most unique attacks in the game, I think. Um, it has this four-way thing, so you're trying to line it up with the enemies just right to maximize it. There's not a lot of things in the game like that.
Electric? No, fire? Soap? So now let's see the soap one shots these enemies because I just got a soap booster. Sight. I can even run into these guys, which is kind of neat. I'm just recklessly running in this thing. So let's... So now that I'm low on health, I want some more hearts. Those urchins are dangerous. weird that when the tip of the hypno lore hits it um it kills the whole sh the whole line we think these would be individual projectiles it's not hypno uh so like so i can just say here consistency hip hypno lore looks like separate projectiles but it acts as one. Um, keep uh, individual bullets individual. Let's see no. I guess on stream this is a little it's hard to see, so I'll do this. It's too big. Cool. So hopefully somebody else collects a bunch of level design pictures, maybe Tony uploads those, but once we have all these pieces of data together in one place, we can make some assessments. So, so Soak makes his cooldowns longer, so look how, how less frequent his attacks are now. Oh, he's out of some... I didn't know it wore off that quickly. I didn't know it wore off at all. Wait, I think that enemy's supposed to be soap proof. Lemon said he didn't make it to where um, enemies had resistances. Just try to keep it simple. Otherwise, most likely the Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon, the Pokemon you get in the area, the mount, will have the same resistance that you're trying to attack it with. The one shot. Look, I'm just swimming through this electricity. Killed you. Killed you. I need to make sure I get another Galvan Angler. Static skin. Did those hurt me? Yeah, those hurt me. So that's so weird. That's why I think Lemon originally wanted to have the ones that you could absorb be some color, and the other ones be another, but this is weird. Like, I can absorb electric, right? So, like, why did that hurt me? It's weird. It's really complex. Oh, the guy being just ate that Pokemon. Dangerous. That's a lot of hip moments. Oh, come on. You're not supposed to. That's a gold one, but you're not. I think that little crown there is not. A, a clear enough uh, 
power level indicator. So, so I can say like the crown icon is not a clear enough power level indicator. It's just like um, make the stronger enemies um, intro with a sound effect if you can't spare any more visual elements for clarity. So this, um, the reason why we do this is, um, unclear or missing feedback. There's only a handful of sizes, but apparently there's multiple tiers of strengths. I should put Tony's gameplay on the stream too. movement in the game with the character movement is not very interesting you add a lasso it gets more interesting and then you add mounts for movement it gets more interesting but yeah trying to design challenges that are all about the expressiveness of movement and how different mounts move is is a thing other than combat it's it's, it's, its own thing that would take its own um, energy and attention They only unlock the pet ability after you go out a few times and maybe after you reach a certain rank. So you can just do this. And then you just return to base. I feel like this was weird. I feel like capturing the pet should require like, I don't know, lassoing a, a certain number of them or something. That's kind of how Pokemon Go does it. Like, you befriend yeah. enough of them that you can get one as a pet. This whole like um, yeah, that's how. Ridiculous how the five does it for uh, uh, the, all those things you can the, capture. Yeah, the ones you full ton. I know all the enemies guards are you no. Know, each guard is unique, so it's a person. But I think the animals you had to get a certain amount of them to get them. Sounds familiar. Hmm. It's like, oh, did you start over? No, you have to go back to base in order to keep it as a pet. So, typically, because you don't want to end your runs just because you find a cool mount, you go out specifically to get a pet, and that's what that was. Like, I ran, found the first thing I could find, and didn't. Beep, beep, boop, boop. This guy's annoying. You know, like it doesn't matter if I get hit. I'm just here for the pets. Maybe you pause and you say return the pet. I can't believe I lost my pet during this recalling animation. <laughs> if the player has a if the player is riding a pet at the start of the recalling animation. Ensure that they still have it when they reach the camp. That's a consistency. It's just like, I was writing it. You're like, yeah, but you ran in the cutscene. You're like, no, no, no. That's not how video games work. <laughs> oh, Tony ended his stream. 
Yeah, made a little bit of progress. So, it gets boring. What about your observation? So we're here to design and learn, not to have fun. Yeah. There's nothing fun about games. Look here, bucko. I'm gonna do it now. Put, put all those images you said you saved in and... Okay. <laughs> oh, I gotta like this. Okay. Uh -huh. And the reason why pets are so important is because they're just like free mounts and free damage, which are the only two things that really matter in this game. I just did that. Hmm, it didn't save. Oh, because I didn't do it, he wants me to ensure that I know how to do it. Like this. Did he get hit and they already left? No. I was like, how dare you? Which means to fill out a full pet roster, you have to at least go out six times. Like this, and just return. Which is kind of cool. That makes the pets that are further out a little more exotic, a little more rare. That's kind of neat. Uh, kind of playing into the whole, like... Just traversing the land is dangerous, so you know you can catch all the pidgeys and rabbits as you want. But if you want that snover or that Articuno, you're gonna have to work for it. Uh, what is? So the pacing issue, how would you fix that with pets? Uh, Pokemon Go style uh, mount enough of a monster to then uh, have it as a pet option. I know that kind of messes up a lot of things, but this would fix the issue of uh, pacing where, where getting mounts is largely a matter of killing runs um, maybe if there was a way to make runs uh, less about kind of getting as far as you can like intermediate or short goals but ultimately like if you have the power and you can't keep going you want to keep going so like it's not there's no easy answer ooh, I want that. it's no easy answer to this challenge of like who I was close of what to do And everything you do about the game is about collecting more power. So like, you get all these patches, you, you play to the animals' infinities, you pet them, they get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And then you just summon them and they wreck stuff. Maybe making some of the this intermediate goals a little bit more clear. Like right now I have Where's my... They're not even displayed here. But, like, see, up at the top, unlock two other... The other two base camp exits. Like, oh, that's your intermediate goal. Um... It's kind of it's kind of interesting, like, the Halo 4 problem. You do all those missions, but every mission is basically, like, get to the next terminal and hit the button. And you're like, well... And this, just getting to the zone and hitting a button is really all that that's about. Did I already get shrub off? Probably. That was also hidden behind another plant. 
So watch the placement of plants. Uh, ensure that multiple pins slash plants aren't placed on top of each other. The reason why is just a lot of reasons. Aesthetics, cleanliness, um, cluttered visuals, yeah. And I can do a picture of this just in case. I'm going to post this into the daily challenge chat. My itchy bullet shield is orange, and then the enemies is red. It's so weird. He's trying to tell me that if I hit it, I will inflict itchy if, if I land it correctly. There's so many different pins to collect when at least in these early phases you're just like grabbing anything right you have nothing to do but to collect them which is a nice simple goal but because there's so many you're like uh this one just random like sure whatever this one So the big heart heals you half of your remaining health, so I should have grabbed the big heart before the little heart. I recommend not doing that. Um, so I'm going to recommend not doing it. Uh, the big rainbow heart should restore a set amount of HP, not half. The reason why is because players even though it's extremely rare to get a heart and that other heart at the same time, this is a very minor thing. Just to unclear missing feedback. It's kind of like a consistency thing. Yeah. The kind of problem here is that the world was created before there was something interesting to fill it with. It's not like he's like, I had all these crazy cool areas and I've got to stick them together somehow. Rather, he. He made a map and then filled it with procedurally generated content. The 
fact that you can get double powers from going onto a patch that you already visited is insane. Poor bump. Get through hot train! Come on, everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this. I like how some, some shots you don't have to aim or you have to aim short. I like that about the splitting bullets and these, these crazy bullets. You gotta like, aim short so that the shockwave does its thing. nowhere to go. Sometimes I feel like the enemies come out and start attacking too quickly. Where like you, you want to make uh, decisions about which one you want to tackle or stun or whatever, but then they come out so quickly you're like, oh, well, like you just have to run, <laughs> start running. Some of these perks, there should be trade-offs. Yeah, the mounts do provide a lot of variety, but um, it's hard to find that variety anywhere else while you're playing. Uh, the little pickups you get just kind of mix up your stats. You want more ferocity, you want more this, you're like, eh, you know, sure. But like, you don't pick up a, a new gun, you don't pick up a new type of ammo, you pretty much get all the ammo types from the beginning. One region isn't more subject to the ammo type than others for the most part. There's probably more bananas near the bonobo, shinobo, but not, not really. So in, in a very broad sense, you just go over all these tiles and they're just so similar. And you're making so many decisions that are uninformed, like which one do you want here? You're like, I don't know. I have a combuskin, so maybe this one. Chim -ha -chim. I feel like I never like get lucky with my first uh, gambit with the the altar. Oh, like yeah. I'll go for like one uh, power, uh, one boost right, then like the I don't see like a, like I get like a fire for example, and I don't see like a fire guy for like a whole like uh, what do you call it? Run. A whole ecosystem. Yeah. Oh, a whole bio. Oh, wait. Yeah. I saw your tier list, you put the the B in low tier or whatever, and I agree, the B is kind of like... I, I think it's defensive ability is kind of useless, like I don't... It doesn't really do much. This little transition you... right here, between zones, I love that the map comes up, but it, I move so quickly that it barely comes up before it has a chance to go away. Like, usually it's like this. Up, down, I'm like, what? I guess it's my fault, but I check. I usually step into the thing and then check the map, which is incredibly like, hey, use the feature. <laughs> Oops, my bad. Oh, so I'm just gonna make some suggestions about enemies now. Like, the enemies, you know, in a lot of ways. I made one suggestion that the mount skills that are defensive should plant you in place. 
like the combusting guy instead of dashing around like crazy you should just be like you hunker down and you have a flame shield around you um, the reason why is because you'll get more clean bullet patterns if you um, have stationary things launching the bullets so that the challenge is getting close to them right uh, so if somebody's running at you all the time you're like well I'm just gonna shoot and run away right but if it's I'm in the top left corner and I'm not moving you're like hmm like how do I get to the top left corner and that's because the enemies are stationary right? you have to have that mix oh. so what if the mm. enemies all the crocodiles got together in one of these like battle rooms <laughs> emergency heal no, the coyotes and the crocodiles are working together. <laughs> the mountain lions and the wolves. Um, so let's say like you, you enter this area right here or whatever. You like a combuskin. I keep calling him a combuskin. Um, and let's say he's a crocodile. So he's like, you know, get out of my territory. Let's say he's very territorial. He does this. You hit him. He's like, oh no, I don't want to be weak. He like goes over here. And just starts spewing fire but not approaching me right like he just stays over there and spews fire so then i would have to navigate through this little minefield or whatever and would, and he wouldn't be an immediate threat because i feel like the thing that makes him an immediate threat is they just ram you and then they just make bullets inside of your stomach and you're like oh, oh. like some kind of anime you're like ha 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 karama <laughs> Yeah, go on. I thought I saw that in something recently. I can't remember. So, like... Oh! And the filler... Like, the filler fight in the pain art. The freaking summoner pain. Freaking... Goes to, uh... What's the, the torture guy's name? Uh... Ibiki? Or whatever. And no. she, like... Presses her palm into his stomach and summons a... Summon out of his stomach. I was like, what the frick? <laughs> it's like, whoa! Anyway, yeah, go on. So yeah, like, right now, see how the enemies all converge on me? So the only place for me to go is, you know, away, right? But if they just stayed in place, and that ostrich was running circles, that's a much different kind of challenge. It gives you one more um, axis of, of variety and control. Oh, I was gonna say the, uh, the the status status based attacks should do little to to no damage. You have to trade off, just like in Pokemon. You know, even though Skull is the best move in the game. Stop it! Don't tell him that. Uh, status attack, so this is supposed to be combat variety. Like, if you make everything do damage and, like, do the job, then it's all one big easy choice. Um, so, like, enemy design-wise, enemies sh can have hunker down, hold ground, or group up, um, and shoot uh, AI protocols. This will fix the like, lacking combat variety a lot. Oh, and this, this little this, uh, copy link, this is right here. Media UI obfuscation. Who, who put that? Me. Did you put my image in or your image? No, I was doing it right now. Are you were putting my image in or your image? My image. Okay, so I'll do one for me. Uh, overlapping plants. Visual design. Oh, it's supposed to be a media. Okay, I copied the wrong thing. Copy image. Paste. Oh my god. What, what was that? Uh -huh. Copy link. So yeah, when... <laughs> I can't believe I... When you look at this problem from like a... A flexible point of view you're like oh a lot of these um, problems are symptoms right like how, how can I influence the player to do this and that like the elements that are already here are already influencing the player to do this and that it's just important to uh, realize oh, I love it 
Perfect. How do I put the? How do I put an image into the uh, image column now? Observation. You get the image URL and then paste it in the column for URL. Did it pop up? Yeah, but do I take the auto image render and just like copy paste it into the cell now? No. So let me see. I can just look in how you did it. Okay. Yeah. If not, V look up. Okay. So, so now that you have the image in there, no, no, no. Where, where are you trying to put it? No, no. I was like clicking on that thing to see the uh, how you had it set up. Where, but... where are you trying to put the observation image? Let me go back to see where it is. Okay. It's it's already 40. it's already on the media page. So where where else are you trying to get that image? I want to paste it into the observations and questions. Oh, so thing. the black column. Everything yeah. black has to do with in, in, uh, images. So you can just type in, what did you, what'd you call it? UI? Oh, okay, you UI. You just hit it like that, and it just pops up. I need to make this column um, one of these. Where is it? One of these. There you go. So yeah, now the image is associated with it. You use the drop downs in order to conjure. Okay. I started listening to the Sandman, by the way, Marcus. Okay. Mr. Just Sandman. Like I said the word conjure. I'm like. <laughs> oh wait, that's the book by Neil Neil Gaiman, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, my picture looks so teeny me. Oh, wait, maybe it's because it's tiny AP. I get the Still feeling teeny my melee attacks are stronger than normal. Your attacks are sharply boosted when below 15 stamina. Move at increased speeds. Uh, neither of those. I, I kind of like that you can't melee once your gun's recharging because the melee is kind of like a burst of bullets. It makes sense, uh, visuals wise. I just feel like. I don't know. I also felt like it was annoying. Like, you can't, like, shoot down after you got the... You can't melee once you, like, shoot your big glass and you run up in their face. Like, running up in their face is so dangerous. I almost don't want to limit your ability... Like... To do that. He fell into my trap. And without that smoothie thing, you can't like clear rooms out very quickly. But that's why I have this. Cool. I should be doing that a lot more. see the map now so I have currently you can walk normally on slopes he has no elemental attacks I don't think I have to go to quest and go up to pinballs right here I'm not sure how, so all the color coding is just lost on me now there's too much fruit loops so prickly shots does that mean it's itchy type or not so like uh, I can just say things like word descriptions and color coding gets very confusing. Clean up or simplify word descriptions, and then color coding is used for too many systems. So, so I can just say um, unclear or missing feedback, and then I can say. For this one, clean up or simplify word descriptions. That's just going to be unclear or missing feedback. For example, uh, I can go to slash. Releases a sweeping wave of prickly shots. And that's not itchy.
does this mean itchy shots? So my armadillo is color coded full yellow now, and I'm not sure why. And I can reflect these bullets by rolling into them, but then they don't change color. Very confusing. Look, I can go up normally on slopes because I'm Rolladillo and nothing stops me. That's what this whole level is basically about. It's ripping a skunk in the corner. Is that one? Why is that one red? Was it charmed? I don't understand. Color and everything means so many things. See, I reversed the polarity of that one shot, it turned blue. Who cares about a shot? That guy has like a permanent stinger out, which makes him dangerous. Ah, he beating me up. Not only this part, it has a lot of like uh, waves that normally would keep normal players like pushed down. They just put a lot of enemies here too. <laughs> it's so cluttered. I think I want that skunk. I might as well get this guy. The next mount skill will be stronger. Okay. I don't have another mount skill. I was dumb. Oh, I'm getting pushed down by the the, the wave and stuff. Right here, I feel like my aim doesn't matter too much to their speed up this battle. What would have sped it up in some ways would be using melee a lot, but if your melee skill isn't uh, leveled up, it still takes a lot of pa, 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 pa in the corner. So like, sometimes just battles are more drawn out just because they have a lot of health. Oh, who hit me? Which one of y'all hit me? Me. <laughs> so I have critical health. They say after a battle when you have critical health. Let's see what the chameleon has. When you have an ailment become immune to that type and it, and you can boot you can eat bug types for stamina. Not great. So now they can't see me. Oh, he just he moved downward faster because he's on the slope, and I thought he was just walking. Clever. I'll take that. Level two. now for the dungeon. Yeah, it, it makes you work really hard for these. It's interesting. You're bound to be treasure in there. Am I a treasure hunter? I guess I kind of forgot what the intro cutscene said, but like... 
<laughs> what the? You can't just like run into people. So right now, like, you really want the player to be like, I'm gonna die. Should I just leave with my mount? The answer is never. Never. That web blocks bullets. It's pretty insane. How'd you get over here? Oh, I just ran straight into that. My character was brown and brown background. I'm like, where am I? Oh no. I can see purple. I don't know. I think every I think people find the lasso wing the most fun. Uh, That's pretty cool. The ring around the rosy and the bullets and everything. Then people find using mount skills correctly, like you know, poisoning when you want to poison and aiming it. I think that's the second most fun thing. But I'm trying to figure out how many fun things there are, like that I would really look forward to doing. Like you know, the Rolladillo has a um, it has a reflection on its shell. So like, is there an enemy that's just like I have a ton of bullets coming, you, like stuff it, and you just like roll straight into its mouth, and all the bullets reflect and just wreck them? Like I don't think so. <laughs> uh, is there, and they're like, what opportunity is there for that? Well, it's really hard because the enemies move and shoot they don't stationary shoot and then they have shields around them so it's just really hard to get a really clean basic interaction like reflecting to happen so every, everything's just kind of like loose you have to work really hard in order to get those interactions to be distinct but yeah this is a just the third day in our breakdown process of patch quest. Uh, so far we have many observations and questions. We have many elements of the design space filled out currently. I'll just do this. Many elements of the design space. And we have the level design, which is we're gathering images today to highlight very specific setups and scenarios. All right, we got like, how many? How many criteria do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 21 point criteria still for uh, evaluating uh, level design because level design is incredibly complex. Um, and whenever a principle is broken based on level design, the same principles we identified uh, in the other tabs, they're also available here. So we'll be getting some very specific examples. but. Um, some of the big questions that Lemon wants us to address are, you know, shrinking quests. Is there a way to encourage moving and repositioning combat instead of just circle strafing? Um, it's macro, like, uh, level progression questions. And how to make the corridors more interesting, the dungeons more interesting, and the mini bosses more interesting, right? I mean, you can see on the stream itself, and if you play the game, it's a lot of the same stuff, right? A lot of the time. So we're going to try to answer all these questions, right? And try to do it in a way that's appropriate for patch quest, efficient development wise, and interesting gameplay wise. That's always the challenge. And we take that challenge on head on, apply directly to the forehead. <coughs> cool. So that's it for today's stream. We're going to do a follow up kind of recap stream of everything on Friday. Maybe Lemon will be there, maybe not, but that's when we'll have all of our data compiled and I'll give like a lot of my high level complex thoughts about the game. I mean, you're seeing, like normally I would disappear and write a blog post and then you'd read it and that'd be it. But you can see the formation of the, the ideas all happening piece by piece, right? A bunch of observations and what that means. Some are valid, some are invalid. Some are just human errors, some are not. So, you know, all observations are 
valid or, or necessary and, and, and important. And then we go on to organizing things based on, sometimes we do level design first, sometimes we do design space first, but either way, just really examining the breadth of content. Like how do all these different things relate to each other? How does that make the gameplay? How does that change the encourage movement variety, right? How does that change the way that you engage in combat? How do these different things do all these different things? Because there's so many intersecting and overlapping considerations. This is just one way to start organizing it. But once we get a good feel for this, then we can play levels, examine how we're playing, find areas that we uh, like or dislike, and then break down the level design based on those experiences. And then all of that informs how we make suggestions. So this isn't just like, I don't like this game, let me just you know, turn it into the game that I like. This is, oh, after playing many, many, many hours and doing the work, these are the things that seem most appropriate for the reasons. Uh, so yeah, look forward to our full recap on Friday or beyond, and we will see you guys next time. Bye, stream. Later, everybody. Yeah.